My name is Caleb Poor. Uh, I'm a student at Indiana University. I'm also a Hoosier. I was born and raised in Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, I went to Bloomington North High School, and it was probably, uh, probably a little bit earlier than that when I really started getting involved in the community and started noticing a lot of the issues that, that are happening throughout our country, and um, that became a big part of my life. Um, I'm also a musician. Uh, I draw a lot. I like draw with like pen all the time, and I make clothes too. Uh, take some of those drawings and like put them on stuff. Uh, I just try to keep my plate full, uh, work on a lot of stuff. Dude, I really want to go to law school after I graduate college. Uh, that's something I've been having my eye on. I distinctly remember watching on TV when the the Trayvon Martin uh, result came back in and the uh, just kind of like the silence that was in the room. And that was kind of my first experience, I think I was about 11 years old, where I was, uh, I kind of realized that things weren't necessarily as, as good as they say they are when you're growing up and, um, and maybe like the country isn't as together as, as you'd like to think it is. That was when I wanted to do my own like research. And when I started like really looking into it, I noticed that that wasn't anything new. Uh, so that's, it was kind of like, it was really revealing and kind of a turning point in how I thought about my place in the world and in this country. Um, and it took probably until, I was around like a freshman in high school when I put together like my first protest and worked with like other students and, and brought like a coalition of people together to, to get things done. And these kids had come into school, uh, they were wearing like Confederate flag like capes and were dressed as soldiers. It had been a few days long where these like tensions were growing and then it kind of all bubbled over when we had this pride day at our school for our LGBTQ kids. And that's the same day that we ended up organizing the protest and we went to the, uh, the school board office and um, we stayed out there and by the end of the day we had the Confederate flag banned across the entire school system. I feel like what, what was happening after that for us was this uh, like rampant amount of like mass shootings happening and especially school shootings happening. Uh, that and had like me and my peers like really worried. We had like a countless amount of days where we would go on lockdown and we would have to uh, like run these drills. And we always thought that, you know, that could be us. In 2018, when the Parkland shooting happened, we uh, like reorganized, we got like a student coalition together um, and it was called Bloomington Students Against Assault Weapons. Um, we took about 50 kids um, to, on a bus to DC and we joined the March for Our Lives. From then we used uh, like our donations and like the, the power that we had accumulated from organizing to, to like support candidates and like uh, influence them to take more proactive measures for gun reform. It's super rewarding to be able to like see the change that um, you've been striving to make happen over, over the course of time. But the important thing to remember is that it's kind of like a pendulum and you you almost always have to keep fighting or else you know you take one step forward and you can take two steps back just as fast. There's being a light illuminated on kind of like the uh, you know the daily struggles that black Americans have to go through being in in this country and I'm I'm only 19 years old and I've already had what I feel like is a life's worth of like negative experiences with law enforcement that have crossed the line. A couple of years ago I had a like a, a traffic stop in Kentucky and it it just was went left before it it was ever even anything. I was texting my mom like I love you I don't know like if I'm gonna make it out of this. It was terrifying to to be that close to becoming like a hashtag to just be like another name like that. Like nothing can really prepare you for when something like that happens. Um, so it's hard to like see these videos that happen so often. It's hard to see that and like I see myself there and I see, um, I see friends and I see like family there. You come to the realization at some point that the way that you have to maneuver in the world, you have to learn an extra set of skills that will protect you when it comes to times like that. And uh, you know, trying to wear a shield like that is exhausting. When that kind of uh, racism and brutality is so overt when it's caught on camera and then you turn around and it's in your workplace and it's in your school system and it's in all these facets of society. 
I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight hard up until you know that point to to try to to try to make it so I don't have to have that conversation. Um, you know, the one that uh, every parent has to have with their their black child about you know what to do if you're pulled over, or what happens when you interact with the police, and you know maybe you'd like to think that if you just keep your hands on the wheel and you know are respectful or whatever, then uh, then everything will be okay. But we've seen that that's not enough. I'm hoping that that by that time I can just, my kid will be able to walk the world safely. If it's not, then you know, I have to have, still have those conversations and, and try to keep them safe in the world, but uh, you know, nothing will come until there's, there's real change like in, uh, in that area. You know, another thing is I keep seeing these uh, like black people die for like very minor like crimes or whatever they think that the, that the person did. Uh, they thought George Floyd was doing a counterfeit check. I don't see why force was, was used in that situation. Same thing with Eric Garner selling a pack of cigarettes. These are things that you get a citation for that people are somehow getting slammed to the ground and losing their life and having their neck kneeled on for nine minutes. That's unacceptable. I think the use of force is becoming are way more prevalent. I think that the uh, the actions that a lot of police officers take can be justified if they felt it was reasonable at the time. Standard needs to be changed to necessary. There are a lot of lives being taken way prematurely and people are able to get away with it by saying, well, I thought he had this. I don't think that's okay. That's gotta change too. There's a, there's a lot of things that, that must be done and, and, and one of the things is that this stuff needs to be signal boosted to people. People need to know how much of their city's budget is going towards these things and whether or not it's really reducing crime or, and whether or not it's really helping the community become a better place and whether or not that money could be put somewhere else that could, uh, that could benefit the community. I'm hoping that we have more people um, in our like local government and more community leaders really uh, step up and and say like what kind of change that they can personally make. Like the people in power um, need to need to take some action. Um, I know that there's you know Bloomington is somewhat diverse, but there's there's a black population that um, in this town that I think still suffers and and deserves deserves justice. You know I'm just a human being. You know I want. I want the, the same rights and, um, and to be respected just like everybody else. And I think that we're seeing right now, this is such a tense moment in America. I feel like there's so, we're facing another huge economic downfall, the second one that we've had in almost 10 years. There are a lot of people that, that do not feel secure right now at all. And I think it would, it would help a lot if people could just like have a bit more compassion and um, and see each other and, and stop dehumanizing each other. And that would, um, that would be good to see. You know, one person can talk to another person and um, especially those people in your life that you think may be on the other side of this issue, opening up a dialogue with them and, uh, and, and telling them about this stuff and educating people, um, you know, that can spread uh, that can spread throughout the entire population. So as one person, I feel like, I feel like my job is to do as much as I can to, to make impactful change. But I do realize that other people don't have that same amount of time and, and luxury, but there's always stuff that, that you can do. And I mean, as a citizen, you know, one of the most important things you can do is vote. Um, and you know, if you don't see a candidate that embodies what you believe in up there, then maybe you need to run. What I want from the future is to see um, the people that have been disfranchised so much through the course of the, the last 50 years um, with all the uh, economic distraught that's happened um, and how that's cascaded into all these other issues in our society. I want to see that fixed. I want to see the American dream actually be, be realistic. And I want that to be attainable um, without the fear of like racism and prejudice getting in the way. I don't know if we'll ever come to a time when it's completely eliminated, but 
right now we're kind of sliding into this place where it's getting very, very dark. I think that comes from years of complicity and pretending like the problem isn't really there. So I think what I want to see from the future is the curtain pull back on this stuff and for people to, to see the truth for what it is. And once we do that, then we can move forward.